Welcome. This is Dave Eshelman. Thanks to Janet Eberle for the music and Doug Garrett for the audio. Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, Throw off your old evil nature and your former way of life, which is rotten through and through, full of deception. Instead, let there be a spiritual renewal of your thoughts and attitudes. You must display a new nature because you're a new person created in God's likeness, righteous, holy, and true. Our theme today is the renewal of our thoughts and attitudes. This is a radical change of attitude and mind, not some minor adjustment or tweaking of direction. Your mind, if left empty, will go south uh, and soon begin to feel with, uh, fill with unwholesome thoughts. That's because of our sinful nature we inherited from Adam. Meditation is helpful, but meditation will go south unless it is focused on God. What we think, we speak. The happiness of your life depends upon your thoughts. A few verses later, the apostle says, don't let any unwholesome thoughts come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up, that it may benefit those who listen. Remember, we speak only helpful words that uh, benefit others. Jesus said, whatever is in the heart or the mind determines what you say. A good person produces good words from a good heart or mind, and an evil person produces evil words from an evil mind. Jesus continues, I tell you this, that you must give an account on the judgment day of every idle word you speak. The words you say now reflect your fate then. Either you will be justified by them or you will be condemned, Matthew 12. To the Romans, the Apostle Paul writes, be transformed or changed by the renewal of your mind, by it's new ideas and new attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what is good and acceptable and perfect in God's sight for you. Be transformed by letting your mind be renewed. Solomon writes, above all else, guard your mind or your heart for everything you do flows from it. Proverbs 4, again he says, a man thinks, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Isaiah says, thou will keep in perfect peace, uh, whose mind is fixed or stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. A mind stayed on Christ results in peace. While Paul was in prison, he had lots of time to think. He focused his mind on things that were true and noble, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. He continues, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. If you battle with sadness or depression, think or check your thoughts. Do you have problems with impure thoughts or daydreams? Examine what you're putting into your mind through television, through internet, through books, through conversation, movies, magazines. Replace harmful input with wholesome material. Above all, read God's word and pray. Ask God to help you focus your mind on what is good and pure. It takes practice, but it can be done. We renew our mind by filling it with these good things. Satan will do all he can to bring evil thoughts, but we push the evil away by letting the Holy Spirit help us. Help us to think on scripture and constructive pure thoughts. Peter writes, uh, the end is near. 
be alert, sober-minded, sober-minded so you can pray. The Amplified says, keep sound-minded uh, and self-restraint and alert so you can pray. David writes, blessed is the one who delights in the law of the Lord and who meditates or focuses on God's word day and night. Writing during a time of hopelessness and depression, David says, I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. So he replaces negative thoughts with God's word and God's actions in his life and in history. Paul teaches us how to control our thoughts. For though we live in a world, we don't wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, our weapons have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that set, sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We take captive every thought, make it obedient to Christ. He says, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose in you. You may have a renewed mind if you, you can't have a renewed mind unless you are constant, if you are constantly hobnobbing with the wrong crowd, listening to the wrong things. The children of Israel mingled with the nations and ended up adopting their customs. Psalm 106. Psalm 1, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of the scorners. Sitting in front of the TV will result in thoughts of depression or discouragement. To have a renewed mind, let God give you a passion, a focus like Paul, who said, one thing I do, forget what is behind, straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. He writes, set your mind on or hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ who is our life appears, then you also appear with him in glory. Colossians 3. Sitting or reigning with Christ in glory is certainly a positive thought. Some more good news is that we believers have the mind of Christ, Paul says to the Colossians. Who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Having the mind of Christ, we have some understanding of God's plan in our world and in our life. It means we identify with Christ's purposes and his compassion to seek and to save the lost. The mind of Christ cannot be understood by those without the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, 14, the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. He writes again in Philippians, your attitude or your mind should be the same that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not demand or cling to his rights as God. He made himself nothing, took the humble position of a slave, and appeared in human form. He obediently humbled himself even further by dying on a criminal's death on the cross. The theme of humility and taking up our cross emerges as our pattern for the, the life of a Christian, the life of purpose and meaning. To discern the mind of Christ, 
We must learn to hear his voice. Jesus often went to a lonely places to pray, to pray. Luke 5, 16. For what did he pray? Curtis Mitchell, in his book, Praying Jesus' Way, says that some people teach that Jesus seldom prayed for himself. To be sure, he prayed for others and their needs, but the evidence indicates much prayer for personal needs. Almost always, the indications are that he petitioned for spiritual rather than material needs. It appears that the only specific incident where we are to pray for physical needs is when Jesus taught us to pray in Matthew 6, give us this day our daily bread. Guidance in accomplishing the mission of the Father seems to have been the high priority item on Jesus' prayer list. The glory of the Father was evidently the ultimate motive in all Jesus' petitioning, end quote. Jesus prayed to know and understand God's will. We have the same privilege as Jesus. If we abide with him, dine with him, he will teach us through his word and through the still small voice of the Spirit. A few days before Blanche Horse died, I overheard a brother ask her, what do you do to keep your life motivated and enriched? She said, I am in love with the scriptures. Ask God to give you a love for his eternal word. Your life will take on a new zest as your mind is renewed with God's word. If the Bible has lost its zest, I suggest take time, take two hours or so, to read the Gospel of Mark with an open mind, and I promise you, your mind will be renewed. Let us pray. With the many things that bombard our minds through TV and negative people, through world news, we need your Holy Spirit, Lord, to keep us focused on you and on your eternal word. Help us to bring every thought into captivity in line with what is pleasing to you. Cleanse us, make us pure and holy. Use us to encourage others. In Jesus' name, amen. Janet will play pure in heart. Oh God, help me to be. May I devote my life wholly to thee. Watch thou my wayward feet. Guide me with counsel sweet. Pure in heart, help me to be. Teach me to do thy will most lovingly. Be thou my friend and guide. Let me with thee abide. Pure in heart, help me to be. Pure in heart, O God, help me to be until thy holy face I see. Keep me from secret sin. Reign thou my soul within. Pure in heart, help me to be. Janet?
Before I go off the air, I want to mention our children and grandchildren want us to move to Goshen, Indiana. We will really miss our friends here, but thank God we will meet in heaven where there is no parting. Thank you. And on behalf of pastoral services and the whole Landis Homes community, we want to send David and Helen off with a blessing. So let's pray together. David and Helen, God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel's guide uphold you. With his sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Neath his wings protecting hide you. Daily manna still provide you. God be with you till we meet again. When life's perils thick confound you, put his arms unfailing round you. God be with you till we meet again. Keep love's banner floating o'er you. Smite death's threatening wave before you. God be with you till we meet again. We thank you, O oh God, for David and Helen Eshelman, for their faithful service to you in ministry in Washington, D.C., and in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And my guess is they will continue to serve you in Goshen, Indiana. May you bless David and Helen and their family in the years to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.